in place thereof, distributed to the persons on the approved list, posted in the Board of Education Administrative Office and sent to the Bergen Record and the Community News. The announcement for the regular monthly meeting, along with the date, place, and time thereof, was distributed on June 3rd, 2015. The items to be discussed during the closed work session of June 11, 2015 may include personnel matters, student matters, legal matters, negotiations, and or grievances, tactics and techniques utilized in protecting public safety and property. The results of these discussions will be made public as soon as possible. I'd like to turn the meeting over to um, Bruce for um, um, our meet and greet. Okay, thank you, uh, and uh, good evening, everybody. Um, we're going to take a short uh, recess to have some coffee and cookies so each of you can talk. But um, I do have a, a number of great things to share with the board tonight. But I'm going to start with uh, two of my favorite things. And it's our evening after a very, very long and involved interview process that we went through multi levels of candidates. We have, as the board knows, we have approved two new administrators. And I'm going to ask both of them just to greet you uh, with uh, little words about themselves and, and so forth. But um, certainly we are all very excited to have them join uh, the administrative team. They've been with us. We've promoted from within. As you know, we're probably about 50-50. If you look at us over the years, we're about 50% in administration ranks from promotion and 50% from bringing outside new people in. So I think we balance that quite well depending on, you know, the candidate pool at the time. So let me start by asking uh, Michelle Perino uh, to say hello to everybody. We'll get up, we'll get coffee. We're going to get up and get coffee and cookies and people can talk to both of you but for, for, for a couple of minutes here. Uh, but I, I'd like Michelle to just Michelle, if you don't mind, just uh, stand and just say hello to everybody. And, and, uh, we're very, very excited to have you join us as our new Director of Special Education. Thank you. And I'd like to thank the Board of Education for selecting me to be your new Director of Special Education. I am just delighted to be appointed to this position. Uh, I know we're going to face many challenges together, um, some of which include our increasing numbers in special education there's going to be facing some very challenging um, disabilities, the severity of which are pretty extreme. But I know from um, uh, working in this district for 15 years, I know how supportive both the Board of Education is and Central Administration is, and how hard you all work for all the students in this district, including the special education students. Um, we have such a talented and dedicated staff that I'm going to have the privilege of working with in meeting these challenges. Um, we also have some very positively involved parents, and I think that that, when we work together with parents, we really can achieve so much more for our students. And we have those positive relationships, and I'm looking forward to working with parents as well. Um, my belief in education is that we need to set the bar high for children, that whether they have disabilities or not, that setting the bar high we find that our children never cease to amaze us. They just reach these higher levels when we expect from them, even though their learning styles might be different or their abilities might be different. And um, you know, I'm just delighted about it. First and foremost, I think, the most important thing we have to do in education is to set a strong foundation in developing children who are caring and loving individuals who respect all people, who respect all life. And on that really strong foundation, I think then we build on skills and knowledge and hopefully our students will uh, leave us and be effective in the community and be happy lives. So I just want you to know I'm honored to be in this position. I look forward to starting officially on July 1st. And thank you again. One of, one of, one of, some of the things I can share and some I won't share because the interview process, sometimes you're, it's a little confidential with some of the questions and everything. But one of the things that impressed us was when you compared the uh, uh, candidates that we brought forward through the process, um, 
Michelle had an edge uh, because of her 15 years with us, knowing our system, working close with uh, Dr. Bean, uh, working close with the central office, and it was a natural kind of uh, transition for her. And uh, it was a very interesting and a very highly supportive woman for Michelle to, to do this for everybody. So uh, we're very happy that she chose to go that direction because uh, one of the most difficult positions in any school district is when you step up to be number one. You can be number one in a building principal, you could be number one in a middle school, if you're a vice principal moving up, you could be number one as a director uh, from an assistant there. But because when you move to number one, it's a whole different ballgame. Number two is pretty supportive and busy, but it doesn't compare to a number one, not at all. And so having somebody who has put in the, uh, the time to get to know our district and work so hard for the kids in this town, it was great to see her wanting to go up to number one. So Michelle, but again, I have to know that. Okay, uh, talking about moving up to number one in the other ranks, uh, this is Kelly D, and Kelly is the successful candidate, as the board knows, for our Lindcrest uh, School. Uh, there was, certainly was competition, um, and I know she, I embarrass her every time I do this, but I'm so proud of it. Uh, in 2008, all right, 2008, Kelly D was voted the Bergen County Teacher of the Year, and uh, that is not a uh, uh, an easy title to get, as, as everybody here in education knows. And when you think of the uh, thousand, uh, thousands of of competition to get that, you have to be pretty special. So she has that. I've been always proud of it ever since it happened. We actually had two in the last nine years that won that title for a fair one. Uh, you only win one a year. So that's pretty darn good. Uh, the other thing which Kelly had is her experience in, in teaching almost, not every, but almost every grade before we made her the math specialist. And uh, so that background was very strong uh, for her. And so we want to welcome tonight, and Kelly, if you would, would you just introduce yourself a little more? Thank you for that, the introduction. I owe it all to my uh, mentor during my student teaching in parallel, Mary Wallace over there. Um, so I, I have a long history with the district. My career started here as a teacher, and um, I really feel fortunate to have had my years as the math specialist because those opportunities of working with all of the administrators really have enabled me to kind of grab from all of the, the strong, um, dynamic leaders we have in this district, and I feel that my leadership style is going to be a reflection of each and every one of those those administrators, from Bruce to Natalie, um, all the way to all the, the principals in the elementary schools. Um, I am excited and thrilled and honored to take on Lincrest School. Um, I tell people my biggest problem is going to maintain that reward status, and that's not such a bad problem to have, but um, I feel that my strengths in professional development and my strengths in data analysis are really going to help me get in with the teachers and um, work with them and support them with the programs that are already so successful to just take it to the next level. Um, I'm a team player, and so I do share the belief that the success of each elementary school is a result of that administrative team working together. So coming from that district uh, position, I still share that vision of every elementary school success. So I look forward to working with the team and really just raising the bar for all of our students. Um, so thank you all. Thank you all for the opportunity. I look forward to working with you all as well. Thanks. Take five minutes and, and we can have some coffee and cookies and if any board members like to talk to the administrators. We have a motion to recess. Someone. Second. Second. All in favor. All in favor. Aye. 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 It's done. Yeah. 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 I thought it was always before the new rule would have to go that way. 
Okay, can I have approval for um, uh, minutes for the regular monthly meeting of May 21st, 2015 and the executive closed session May 21st, 2015? So moved. So, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, board comments? Mary? Well, I... I <laughs> Now that we have uh, rested on our laurels as a master board, uh, we still have to keep up with the educational aspect of it. So I wanted to know when would you thought would be the best uh, next board retreat? Do you want to go for October mm -hmm. or early November? October. You would like to go for sort of like mid to late October. So I'll reach out to Al and we'll get well, that up. Uh, Probably not no, school, school boards. boards. Well, it's school boards. Boards. Maybe it's better for yeah. in November. Maybe we have to go but early. I can yeah. do. I have a wedding. Yeah. 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 I'll just ask Al for a couple of dates. A couple of what dates that we can look at. You should do it. You should do it right after the election. Yeah. Yeah. When's the? Yeah. All right. Really. That's what we did last time. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay. okay. That's good. For November and the election. All right, so you'll, you'll, you'll get back to us on that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Maybe in September you'll be back to us. Okay. Some tentative September. Some tentative days. Yeah. Any other comments from the board? June, uh, Joan? Uh, today. It is June. It's June. It's June. It is June. Today I went to the uh, meeting down in Trenton. Uh, the state board had the legislative. Uh, they had a panel there of legislators, and they had um, John Mooney, he was the editor of the Spotlight, and he asked them questions. And um, they talked about school policy, they talked about the state budget, they talked about um, <coughs> getting a new governor so we could move along. <laughs> they thought a new governor would be a good idea like so we could move a little bit faster on things. Um, you know, and each of them, Democrats had a certain way that they think that we can they fund the pensions, and the Republicans had another way that they talked about. Um, also, they talked about school funding. Um, they had questions. Uh, they let people ask questions, and they said, you know, with the school funding, can they make it more even than it is right now? And of course, they said, you can't do anything right now. Um, uh, Oh, they talked about charter schools. Uh, there was a lot of people there from Jersey City and from Camden and from the area where there are charter schools. And they're thinking about looking into putting a, a putting up a moratorium for new charter schools for three years. Um, and they, but it's a bill that's coming up. And they said that um, they really haven't really assessed the schools. It started like 20 years ago, and they really haven't done a real good assessment of it. You know, they do decide whether a school should stay open or whether it should be closed, but they really haven't assessed what it's, what it's, what it's been doing. So um, the one senator has a bill to see whether it's a moratorium, no charter schools, no new charter schools. Um, so they want a comprehensive evaluation for charter schools and how it affects the budgets and um, see what, what they can do from there. Um, okay, they talked about the, uh, there also was the, there's senators that came in and out just for a few minutes. They just said, you know, hello, and thank you for being here. Um, uh, let's see who else was there. Uh, Senator Moore, let's see. Okay, they're talking about um, having your senator, if we have issues, actually having a senator come in, and they said, and speak with them, and tell them what your issues are and how you feel about things. Because they said, if you email them, if you call them, we may never get to them. But if you invite them here and you speak to them, then they know exactly how you feel. And then they said that that would be a good idea to do. Uh, they talked about advocacy, that we are here to be for the best interest of our children. So we should know what the legislature is putting forward to really look into all the legislation that goes through and make sure that what they're doing is really for the best interest for the children. Um, also, the state. Um, State president of the Board of Education that works with SD. Mm -hmm. He was there and um, he was talking about um, the best way, he was talking about interacting with the senator and he also talked about um, that's very important that communication dialogue with boards and teachers and parents. That's a really important thing. Um, he said public testimony used to be during the day and now he's actually doing once 
once a month at nighttime. So he's opening public testimony. They can come once a night to see him. Um, talked a little bit about the Common Core and the park test um, and the review of the Common Core. Hespi was the guest speaker at the luncheon. Um, and he supports the Common Core, but he said that because it's just math and language arts, he says we also have to really look into going across the curriculum with science and social studies and making sure that Common Core is also brought into that. Um, and he thinks that the FARC test will be a good indicator of where children, because it's going to be different the way, the way he explained it, that one third of the questions are going to be released. He said will we'll be released and question by question, so you can see exactly where the children are either doing really well or where they need help. And that's why he supported the FARC to continue. And the Common Core said they have the committee that's going to be talking about it. But he says New Jersey has been very, very, like on the top. I mean, it's a good state for education. Mm -hmm. Even though you know, everything you're doing is, is good. Mm -hmm. That's about all. Thank you, Thank you John. Any other comments? Jeff? Hi, good evening, everyone. Um, John, I'd like my shovel back now that you've returned. Uh, we were at the scholarships uh, evening at the high school. Uh, were you going to cover that? Or I was, but go ahead. It was a lovely evening. Uh, I think the number was 3.2 million and next, change. Next, next, a little bit, yeah, right, in excess of $3.2 million in scholarships. Which is quite, quite extraordinary. So really, to uh, uh, our uh, teachers and parents, and administration who took all had a part in that really a job that's awesome. Really done right by our students there and by our by our parents. Uh, the jazz band was excellent, I might add also, so good job to them. And I look forward to next year's because that's a that's really a great evening, you know, and you see the students come up, you know, as the board members we have a, really a front row seat to them shaking hands with the presenters and to see the excitement and the joy of them whether it be the $250 scholarship or the, the last one, which was, I think, $2,500. It's really the priceless feeling to, to, to feel that joy and to connect with those emotions up there being so close to it. So really cool evening. And I still have all the street fair stuff, which is so fun to do with it. Okay. I just wanted to say, I, I apologize, but I couldn't go to the um, scholarship uh, awards last night. But just to piggyback a minute, what, what I think is the most phenomenal thing about that night is all of the local businesses, the local organizations um, that come out and give our students um, those, uh, a lot of those scholarships. Um, and that little money, it adds up, but even more than the money, is just the recognition that, that the, these organizations are paying to our students, and that's what I think is the most phenomenal thing, and I, I think it's the first one I've missed in a long, long time, so. And, 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 and to that, and, and, you know, for all the years I've, I've been going, and I, I was at my daughter's scholarship uh, uh, last night, who she also received the scholarship at her high school. Congratulations. Thank you, I had to be there for that. We're gonna take pictures, but um, you know, when people come out and they and they donate this money in memory of, of someone who they've lost, and they want to preserve that memory through an educational scholarship year after year is phenomenal. And it really says something of, about the community. You know, you have so many of them. We have a lot of those uh, on that stage every single year, and, and it's really pretty special. Right? I was at the uh, sports uh, awards on uh, Monday night with uh, Ron. Um, that was very nice also. Um, our, our sporting uh, groups are, are doing very well, and the kids are very excited. And um, it, it's great to see we, we had a number of uh, accolades. And, um, it was very well attended, I thought, by the athletes. I know some years it's been a little scarce, and it's the time of year. I mean, everybody's got a million things to do when he promised tonight, and the scholarship awards was the following evening, so it was a, it, it was a lot, um, and, uh, but it was very good. And um, that's... Oh, I forgot one. The band dinner. Yes. Of uh, Ms. Quackenbush and I attended 
the, the band dinner at Biagio's. Which was actually, I have to say, was an excellent and nicely intimate setting. Uh, that was just a, a really another really great evening watching of the students, uh, including uh, <coughs> some of our, uh, can I say, classified, is that the right word to use? Uh, sure. Students from all different uh, sure. classes were up there. It was very, it was very endearing, and watching them all receive their awards, the kids were great, and um, I'd like to thank the parents and my friend here but for inviting us and having mm -hmm. us there. Great evening, and I would encourage that uh, if anyone can make it next year, that they can put on a, a, a great dinner and a great, a great evening. So, thanks. It's, it's amazing the amount of talent um, that, you, that is in this district. It's, it's just, crazy. It's, it's just incredible. <clears throat> and, um, they're so um, upbeat and so it's just it's just amazing to watch this district tick. That, that that's the only way I can put it. It's just amazing to watch this district work because it works like a fine-tuned clock. Yes, Ron. Um, yeah, I attended the place you're in there, uh, Cindy, and um, I have to say it was a beautiful evening. Um, but what I think impressed me the most, because the last couple of, when I was on the board the last time I could make make them, um, was the community that our town or our district has with that group. I mean, they're just supportive of each other. The children, of course, are number one, but just seeing a lot of the board members have been together for the last, God knows, since they were kindergarten, so they're all moving up, and it was, you know, sad, so it's leaving, you know, um, but it was just a wonderful, wonderful evening, and I'm, I'm grateful that I was able to attend it, and, um, you know, just again, like Cindy said, it just amazes me uh, what this district is to these students and what the families, how they work together and everything else. And um, sometimes I don't think people realize, you know, how good it is, but it was, it was just a, it was a great evening. Uh, my wife even said to me, she didn't stop talking about it for about three days. And I just thought it was, I really did. A lot of the parents I do know, um, and I've seen them around town, but like I said, when you see it and see the love that they have for each other, and the whole goal is for these children, it just blows you away, so it makes you feel really, really good. Especially when you talk to other people in other districts and you hear about them. And uh, we are well known throughout this, this county. I can tell you that for sure. So, but it was very nice. Any other comments from the board? Okay, we're going to move on to superintendent. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. And I have a number of really nice things tonight to share with you. First of all, on the agenda. First two items, S1, uh, the board is going to approve the year-end closing of our district goals. Uh, there is a couple of books in the back we put together for display if anybody want to look at them. They are phenomenal goals. Uh, the status is there. Uh, as you know, the law requires the superintendent to report um, throughout the year. We have uh, uh, adoption in, in October. We have reports in February. And we have a final status now. So if you have the I hope you have the opportunity to read them. They're really exciting goals and, and some great things going on in the district. The second item uh, we can talk about when the, the motion comes up is a change I'm recommending in the school calendar as I sent home uh, in my update, and I'll share when we get to that. I'll share some of the reasons, you know, why, and uh, also give. Uh, a, con a congratulations to those board members who were trying to convince me to do this in the beginning. Uh, um, however, I thought differently, but I, uh, my mindset has changed, so we'll talk about that when the motion comes up. Now, let me share some really uh, great things. You know, we've been in, we meaning Fairlawn Schools, we've been in a number over the years, a number of surveys. And um, we've been in Newsweek a number of times, which looks at all the high schools across some 27,000 high schools. We've been rated in the, in the top uh, 2 and 4 percent, depending on the year, which is outstanding. Um, we have been in New Jersey monthly in the top 100 schools. We've been in uh, a number of a business week one year. Washington Post has had us. Well, uh, recently, for those of you who had an opportunity to look at this, I finally got to sit down and spend some time. There was a survey put out, and you can go on Google and just type into Google K-12, K-12 niche, just K-12 niche. That whole survey will come up. And this particular ranking survey not only does high schools, but it does all the schools. 
So what I did is I sat down and I put this together, and, and obviously there's rankings nationwide, and then there's statewide rankings. So I looked at Fairlawn schools, uh, because a lot of people don't realize what's going on. So I said, let me, let me make a report tonight. I haven't even shared this with the administration yet, which I will uh, in our next meeting on Tuesday. And uh, let me share some of the things with you that I found on, on this latest nationwide and now statewide survey called K-12 Niche, which is apparently a pretty popular group. Um, I want to start for the first time, we've had our elementary schools in the state of New Jersey ranked. And I'm very happy to say that in the top 75, now elementary schools in the state of New Jersey, roughly about 2,000. Fairlawn put three elementary schools in the top 75. Um, those above us in Bergen County were Tenafly, Ridgewood, Creskill, Glen Rock, and Fairlawn. I want to say that again because one of the things that the commissioner and the Department of Education changed was the report card and the uh, DFG, the district factor grouping. And there is enough data to prove that with wealth goes test scores. Um, and we have always tried to say we are a middle income district and we can compete with some of the very wealthy districts. And I want to report now, you know there are 72 districts in Bergen County. Fine schools, all fine schools, okay? And we're a GH district. And I'm going to talk to you now about the, the I's and the J's. Again, Tenafly, Ridgewood, Cresco, Glen Rock, and Fairlawn. All right, pretty impressive. Let's go to middle schools. And in our middle schools, in the top 75 in the state of New Jersey, we placed both of our middle schools. Um, TJ was ranked 31, and Memorial was ranked 45th. On top, there was middle school of Tenafly, uh, middle schools of Ridgewood, middle school of Creskill, kind of get the habit, isn't it? <laughs> Middle School of Glen Rock, and guess who's next? Fairlawn. Who follows us? Paramus, Riverdale, Mawa, Leonia, Waldwick, Park Ridge, and all the way down to number 75, which was Dumont Middle School. Um, again, quite impressive. And uh, so let's go to the high school. In the high school, we rank 61. Um, again, who's above us? Most, most everybody above us, Tenafly, Northern Highlands, Basquiat Hills, Ramapo, uh, not Indian Hills, they're below us, but Ramapo, the one high school is Ridgewood, Basquiat Valley, Northern Valley, Demers, et cetera, and Glen Rock and us. Again, if you look at the district factor grouping in plays, first time ever, I've never seen a, a ranking. What about total school district? Okay. Top 75 in the state of New Jersey, total school districts, including regionals, which is an unfair comparison because, as you know, they're not a K-12. Okay, there's a whole thing. We rank number 34. Okay. And now, let me show you. If we if we say, okay, let's rank the K-12s in Bergen County. First K-12 ranking in Bergen County is Ridgewood as a total district. The second is Tenafly. The third is Glen Rock. I guess who number four is? Fairlawn. <laughs> Not this time. K-12 district, we're, we're ranked number four in, 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 the, in Bergen County schools. Number four. And again, first GH district in every one of these. Okay, so I think we have an awful lot to be proud of. I think the administration, the teachers, the support staff, our maintenance, our bus drivers, parents in the community, and certainly this board deserves a lot of recognition. This is, and I can remember, say when, I remember a number of years ago, we really weren't ranked like this. So, done a heck of a great job, everybody, and uh, 
I spent time looking at this, and I'm going to share it with the administration. Can we, can we give credit to one other group? What's that? The students. <laughs> well, it's all about educating. All right. Um, so that's good news. I wanted to share that with everybody tonight. A couple of other things. Um, let's see. We, we have, um, Lincrest School was awarded an Echo Schools USA Bronze Award for the Green Achievement from the National Wildlife Federation Echo Schools of USA. We just received this. Um, and it has to do with the uh, out, outdoor uh, decking and the classroom that we put outside and, and the uh, uh, study of you know, uh, wildlife and plant life outside. So that, that's, a, that's a, again, another award that we want. Now, for the 22nd, if, with the permission of the board, June 22nd, I'm going to invite some students over to be recognized for what they've achieved. Um, and we'll also share with you some more things like uh, uh, the uh, elementary uh, word masters and so what we, what we wind up and how we performed on that. So I'll bring that in on the 22nd. Um, news, and I was asked to uh, look into possibly for the December school boards meeting, would our strings quartet or uh, chamber music, whichever we can get, would they be interested in playing? The answer is yes, they would. Teachers, so I'm going to leave that in your okay, hands. I'm going to make the email. okay. But our teacher, uh, uh, Miss Mandarin, is is 100% in favor of and excited to do that and show off our fair law and kids. Great, uh, which is great. I want to give a special congratulations and share with you that uh, we had well this year we've had more than two, but in the spring sports uh, we had Coach. Uh, John Van Soos, who was named Divisional Girls Track Team Coach of, of the Year. And our baseball coach, uh, Jamie Graceffo, was also named the uh, BNC Divisional Baseball Coach of the Year. So two more coaches of the year uh, for, for both of those. And as you well know, uh, we did have, and, and uh, we were talking about, uh, John, John was talking about sports and so forth before. We've had some great spring uh, uh, sports programs that have really achieved a lot. And over the years, you can see it, with these programs getting up, you know, we still struggle in football, we still struggle in wrestling. We used to be a powerhouse in wrestling years ago, football, but not, not, not I'm sorry. We lost a lot of kids to the parochial school football program, but we're working, yeah, and wrestling, but we're working on that. But, we have had a lot of success. Our swimming program is, is doing great. Track program is doing great. Winter track, spring track. Forget the volleyball program. It's you know it's really just controlling everything now. And uh, everybody, like Ron said, wherever we go, you mentioned volleyball. You know, I'm on. I sit on the NJSIAA executive committee. And if you've been reading the paper, we're shaking it up with this whole league thing again. I'm not happy with the leagues, but anyway. Uh, we go down there. They, uh, you know, they know boys volleyball. It's like fair long, fair long, fair long, and they don't even, you know, worry about it. And from the north, and uh, Bridgewater is, is like the south and uh, and southern region. Those two are the two great, great volleyball teams that we constantly compete against each year for the tournament of champions. I think we're now uh, Bergen County champs in boys volleyball for the sixth year in a row, um, and we we we. Beat Don Bosco and then Wayne to, to uh, take that you know that uh, trophy home. So those are some of the nice things that are going on, and I wanted to share them. Uh, we also have you know, another thing, uh, and I'm going to bring the academics in on the 22nd. Uh, uh, some some students and some of the things we uh, were able to achieve with our students. The uh, our, our our cheer squad. Uh, won big, and uh, we won actually a grand national championship this year with the cheerleaders. I don't know how many of you know that, but uh, we won down in uh, Maryland, and then we repeated in Atlantic City. So even a cheerleading team is doing phenomenal. Um, and then, by the way, this is good to uh, all of the board and Lisa and the uh, two young authors. Okay, we had a nice uh, cutting edge put out for uh, information. Yes. Uh, one that of our high school uh, students got a perfect score on his SAT yeah. as a junior. Right. Like, pretty, pretty awesome. 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 
Wow. Okay, that, that's close. one thing? Though? Sure. Uh, you mentioned Cindy didn't feel well there that she left, but the last one was tennis. Uh, yes. Not only did we win, and um, well, we all know about Freddie Zaretsky and yes. how well he's done, and so on and so forth, but Matt Markham was also voted division coach here, but voted to give it to the Wayne Valley coach for such a great job that he had never won it. And he said that he told the other coaches to give it to him this year, so he turned it over to him. So I thought that was, that was a true, true classy thing to do. Great. Yeah, he's won it before. Yeah, he's won it two years in a row, so he just felt he said that he, he felt that he was right. He's the new year, first year coach. Great. Okay, thank you very much, and that's, uh, that's the comment. Okay, we're going to move on to the agenda report. Um, we have a lot of um, things to do. I'm not going to read each and every agenda item, but I am going to break it up by the by the letter of the of the item. So the um, first one is S1 and S2. I thought we agreed that we were going to, I know you don't have to, but are we going to be changing this now for no, it's just because we have a lot to do in a closed okay. session tonight. Okay, I disagree. But... Does everybody else disagree also? Because if, if you do, I will read it. Okay. S1 and S2, and we have E1 that goes through 10, E10. P1 through P20 and SE1 through SE5, and that's where I'm going to stop um, um, and uh, have to make a motion to approve S1 through SE5. Move to S1 through P5? S1 through SE5. SE5. Yes, E5. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. Comments from the board? Mary? Yes. On E. Oh, I wrote it down. E3. Um, every once in a while I make a comment about how proud I am of family um, of being willing to take school teachers into practical field observation. Uh, there are some school districts that uh, do not want to do this, and um, this this is a wonderful thing, particularly tonight when we have in our midst a student teacher, once upon a time, who is now a principal here. And you're not the only student teacher from Montclair that has become a teacher in our school district. So uh, I, I, I had you couldn't let this go by tonight. This was something that, you know, we need to be proud that we do this. Any other comments from the board on these items? Was, um, does this cover Mr. Shansky? No. Was that oh, yes. Uh, he's one of you. Okay. Uh, this time he's not here, I don't believe, but congratulations to Mr. Shansky. Um, looking forward to the community school doing an awesome job uh, in all their endeavors. So good luck to him in taking over um, a person who has sort of like almost created the job. So those are those are tough shoes to fill. So best of luck to him. And. Uh, that's not all. Any other comments from the board? Comments from the public on the on the items that we're voting on? S1 through SE5. Seeing none, roll call. <coughs> Mrs. Piala? Yes. Mr. Barbara Lumo? Yes. Mrs. Wallace? Yes. Mr. Stendell? Yes. Mr. Klein? Yes. Mr. Rosenberg? Yes. Mrs. Frankel? Yes. Ms. Crockett? Yes. <laughs> We're going to the finance items F1 through 11. F11. We have a motion to approve F1 through F11. Second. So, second. Second. Comments from the board? 
Funding. I could go fund me, but you know what? Go fund me is not the best one to go with because of the fees and stuff. So it took us about six weeks to research the four or five options, and we're going to go with um, Razu. So we're in the process of that, but we got their permission to do that because they hold our 501c3 status. Um, so they looked at all of our paperwork and said, yes, you can do this. And so we're hoping that next year, by this time, we can say we're going to build a place. So I just want to thank you for your support. You know where we stand. Thank you. <coughs> Any other comments from the public? Yes, sir. I'm uh, South Yom. I just have a, a something I want to say. I don't know if this is the proper uh, forum to say it in, or if you. I have a meeting scheduled with you tomorrow, Mr. Watson, uh, regarding an incident that happened at the high school with my son and also myself. So if you'd rather I don't bring it out here and you know speak to you tomorrow, that I'll be fine with that. Uh, I just, uh, like I said, I'm just it's upsetting, and I just wanted to bring it to their attention. But like I said, if it's something that you want me to handle tomorrow with you, uh, that's fine with me. Well, I don't, I don't know what it is we're going to handle because you haven't told me that right. yet. But here, the, the answer to it is this: you you have the right to say what you share with the board, whatever it is you want to say to the platform. We don't go back. If it's a personnel item or a student item, the board will not get the debate with you or will talk about it, but they will listen to you. So if you have that option, or you can lay it out with me tomorrow. I mean, I'll, uh, I would like to bring it just to the board's attention. Uh, like I said, I don't you know, want any you know, discussion about it. But, right. but like I said, an incident happened uh, last week on Wednesday, and uh, I guess you'll be hearing most of this tonight, and tomorrow we'll, we'll address some of the other issues. Uh, that was a little disturbing to me and the way it was handled by the administration at the high school. Uh, last Wednesday, it was the second, I believe it was, um, my son got suspended for two days. Okay. Uh, what happened was he approached a teacher, uh, one of his teachers, and I won't you know, say no names or anything like that. He approached one of his teachers um, and said to him, um, Mr. So-and-so, uh, I don't like the way you're looking at my sister. Can you please refrain from looking at my sister? Uh, he's a 15-year-old sophomore. His sister is a 17-year-old. Uh, the teacher, there was two teachers in the room. 
they laughed at him, well, giggled at him, and said, who's your sister? He gave the name. And he said, I don't want to hear no more of this. And he started to shut the door and push him out of the door. Uh, not physically, but just started to shut the door. My son said, being upset, he said, uh, this is effing perverted. And he left the classroom. They must have called the, the principal or the you know security, whatever. They went to get my son. They brought him into the office. He got suspended for two days for that. OK, I understand maybe the 15-year-old may have went the wrong route. Should he have brought it to my attention? Should he have brought it to one of the principal's attention? Maybe so. But we're talking about a 15-year-old who felt uncomfortable with the way something happened, that he felt the urge that he had to take something into his own hands. And wasn't physical, wasn't disrespectful, you know, with the exception of the curse word. Got suspended. This happened at maybe 9.30 in the morning. Within 15, 20 minutes, my wife was called. She went to the school. She got him. And they told him, he's suspended. Bring him back on Friday. Make sure a parent comes with him. The incident was with the vice principal. We won't say the name. So my wife being a little concerned with what happened, she said, well, I hope that this is not going to, you know, it's going to be looked into. He got a little offended and said, uh, I'm offended by that comment. Okay, so she took the child home. He was suspended for two days. Now, I want to make it clear that I am in no way accusing this teacher of any, the first teacher, not the principal, of any wrongdoing, because maybe he didn't do anything wrong. Maybe he's just a good teacher, a friendly teacher, and maybe my son interpreted something wrong. But the problem I had is this here. He was suspended for two days. No one said to him, well, what happened? What made you go to this teacher? Do you know something? Did you see something? Were you the victim of something? It was just, you're suspended, and don't get me caught on school property because you will get arrested. So that's how, that's what upset me was that that's how we treat a child. We victimize him twice. Once for whatever upset him that he felt uncomfortable about. And then the second time we suspend him right on the spot a few minutes later. Now, if that's the school board, you know, school policy that he'd be suspended, okay, fine. I, I agree with that. I'm not, I'm not disputing, you know, the suspension. All I'm saying is, to this day, not one person has said, hey, listen, do you know something? Maybe he witnessed something. And he feels uncomfortable saying, well, hey, I don't want it to happen to my sister. I'm just saying maybe. I don't know. Because he hasn't told me anything either. He just said that he didn't like the way this teacher was looking at his sister. There may be more to it. There may be maybe talk around the school from other kids saying that, hey, this may have happened. I don't know. But my point is not one person from the school said to this kid, hey, listen, why? What provoked you? Did you see something? Did you know something? No, it's suspended, two days, do not get caught on school property or you will get arrested for trespassing. That's how we treat a 15-year-old kid in this school district. So like I said, and I want to make it clear, I am not accusing the teacher of anything because I don't want anyone saying you're making false allegations, because I'm not, I don't know. That man may be a very good teacher, you know, and maybe all the students love him, I, I don't know. I'm not passing judgment on that teacher whatsoever. So I want to make that clear. Fast forward to now to Friday, and here's my problem that I had. He was suspended. Okay, I disagree with the suspension for a kid who's confronting someone because he feels uncomfortable. So that's how we punish him by suspending him instead of trying to find out what happened. So I disagree with the suspension, but that I'll leave to you know whoever. Friday morning, I report to the office with my wife and my son. Sign them back. I guess that's protocol to sign them back into the re re-entry. I don't know about a meeting. You, it was almost a fist fight meeting, but if it's a meeting, that's okay. We get to the office. The vice principal, no name. Okay, come on in. I walk in, my wife walks in, my son is behind me. He's standing in the doorway. My wife sits down, I stand up, and he's behind his desk. Right off the bat, the tone was set. I didn't sit down because I normally, I'm, when I'm agitated, I don't sit down. I've had to stand up. He never offered to say, have a seat. He said, well, I'll stand too then. 
Okay, and you can stand. So he goes on to say, and in a tone which just incited everything, he started speaking to my son. Uh, you understand what you did, right? You understand what you did wrong. So my son really wasn't going to answer him because he felt that he didn't do anything wrong. So he just goes, do you understand me? Or I'll suspend you again right now. So let's threaten the child some more. So then he goes on to say that, and there's banter going around in the school. And if you're involved, so then my wife steps in and says, well, wait a minute. What do you mean that he's involved? What are you accusing him of? Well, there's banter going around the school, and that teacher's daughter was text messaging. Okay. Well, then maybe we should ask the daughter who text messages you anything and not accuse or imply that my son is involved in any of whatever the banter is. I have no idea. And again, my wife said, well, what are you accusing him of? Well, I'm just, and then very nasty to my wife, he said, well, I'm just letting you know that if he's involved, it better stop now. So then I said to him, because now by this point, I boiled over. Because I'm not going to sit here and have him chastise my son. I mean, do whatever your protocol is. If we need to sign something, sign it, whatever you have to do. So I said to him, I have a problem with this whole incident. And off the handle, what's your problem? So, being upset, I raise my voice naturally anyway when I do get upset. But being upset, I said, well, here's my problem. And he tells me, lower your voice or get out of my office. No, he said, I exactly, do not raise your voice at me or get out of my office. I said, I'm not raising my voice at you. This is the way I talk when I'm upset. Well, take it down a notch. I said, I'll try. You do that. Now, this is from a vice principal who's talking to me in this tone of voice. Now, I'm upset. It's my job as a father to be upset and to raise my voice. It's his job as an administrator to calm me down and say, hey, listen, let's relax and let's find out what's going on and we'll get to the bottom of it. But no, he chose to just keep accelerating. So as I was telling him, the same thing I told you guys here, how you victimized the kid twice, then, and I was loud, and I'll admit I, my voice was raised because when I get upset, I raise my voice. He came from around his desk at full voice. Well, I could raise my voice too and came around the desk. Well, I came around the desk too and we were this close to each other's face, yelling and screaming at each other. That's what your vice principal did. And that's the problem I have because I wouldn't come to this forum. I'm not that type of person. I would let things go. Like I said, I'm even okay with the two-day suspension. I mean, I don't agree with it. He got the suspension, that's fine. But the way that that principal, the vice principal, handled the whole situation is disgusting. And the way that that child was disciplined, I hope that that vice principal gets disciplined the same way. The way we just accused him as being guilty without finding the facts out of what really happened because I don't know what's going on in the school, if anything was investigated or not. So I don't want to pass judgment there. I don't know what's going on. But till this day, no one has reached out to me. Yesterday, the principal reached out to my son. But I told him we'll have a meeting tomorrow with you, and we'll get down to the bottom of it. But the way that that vice principal handled this whole case, now that child feels threatened to go to school, because he says now if he walks in the hallway, maybe a little too loud, he may get suspended. If he shows up a few minutes late, he may get suspended. Because now he has a target on his back from this man who was so unprofessional. And the way he handled this whole case is disgusting. That's all I have to say. And like I said, well, I'll be tomorrow. We'll, okay. we'll, we'll take it up tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you for your comment. Any other comments from okay. the public? Seeing none, um, old business. Do we have a work session back? September. 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 September.
But our next meeting is, is June 22nd. Mm -hmm. yes. right, right, our next board meeting. But, the, 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 the work session will be the next school year. Yep. I have a question. When would uh, protocol, um, please? If I wanted to discuss, you know, we've had this conversation about um, perhaps a, a different angle on how we can approach Martin Luther King Day and maybe having a day of service where students can maybe, um, if they can prove that they went out and did a day of service, some type of community service at any acceptable place uh, to the administration, um, and that wouldn't count as an absence. Uh, well, you, when, you, well, we kind of agree on that, so that's right. a good idea, but you've got to be careful. It would count as an absence. You, 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 you've got to count it as an absence. They're not there, they're absent. What it wouldn't count against is their accumulation. Okay. Yeah, as long as it's, it's, it's an excused absence. Yeah, right. Okay, fine. Yeah, you'll be, that, that's right. fine. You'll be so I just wanted to, I didn't know if that was something that, that yeah. we needed to talk about. If, if it's not, then, you know, that's well, not. We can certainly do that in the work session. That's okay. That's fine. You know what yeah. the work session it will tell you what Monday work session. Did you say se it's not September? Where is it listed? Work session on board retreat. Where is it listed? There's a work session. But that says on board retreat. Oh, so actually the the work session is actually in November. And in February, and what's the date? Though? No, it's the um, second, second Monday, Monday in November of November. That's when the next work session. That's is? the next work session. Don't you think maybe we, we should have an emergency or so work session? If there is an emergency, what's the emergency? That nothing's being discussed for six months. To me, that's not an emergency, but that's well, okay. it is if you want to get some work session because we haven't talked about anything in six months. Yeah, I agree. Well, Mark, I understand, but schedules can be changed. We're going to have to decide how to put it in because there's a lot of other things on the September or so, but are there any Mondays that are free in September or October? Mondays, we don't have any, anything scheduled for September. Well, I, I think waiting okay. six September months. September 17th. Months. I'm with you, Mark. I agree. Just in the same, who knows what they're doing in September. It's the end of the spring. Well, um, don't we have any sessions during the summer? No. Nothing no. 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 in July. We'll come back to that. Um, mm -hmm. Do you want to? Do we want to wait till August to schedule it? Yeah, I I, 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 think, I, think, I think we should have one, but I think that we should schedule it once we August. get once we oh, once we to schedule it. Yeah, right. And we don't know if other things may arise between now and then. Right. Also, right. that we could put on that schedule. We're going to need an August. We'll set a date. There yeah, may be something we don't need. Oh, I'm sorry. I got an email back. I already got an email back from uh, the Burton County. Uh, executive board president who said mm -hmm. fair loan is in. So December. we are, yes, what's, I did not get the exact date I forgot to ask. I'm sorry. We might be in. Yes. Yes. So so the first. On, on the calendar. I'm going to I'm gonna email her back for that right now for that date. I think it's usually the first Tuesday. The first. What thing was it like? Uh, it's the first Tuesday. Yeah, that was it's early. So it's usually the, it's the first Tuesday. Yeah. Okay. Only I, I can't. I don't okay. understand the time. What are we talking about? Burton so County School Board's sure. dinner and have our students play. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Yeah. You just get the paper. Like yeah. You know what I'm Perfect. Thanks. Okay. Hold on. Awesome. You have anything else, Jeff? I'm just writing it back to get that date. So, any other new business? Okay. We have no dates to schedule except the fact that we have a, a board meeting again on the 22nd, and we have high school graduation as reminder on the 24th. Um, we have to be there at.
by six o'clock and will we have those parking passes like we did last year so that there's no issue in, with the police in letting us through any barricades that need to be driven through yes Does everybody respond jim marcella sent out um an invite with three important dates on it one was graduation Right, that was the third day. One was the, uh, one was the uh, right. I think that will kick off your parking pass. Okay, when you respond to the email. Yeah, I responded. So I, just everybody respond back to Jim. If you don't have the email that he sent, just send him an email saying you're going to be in attendance at graduation and then the parking passes will be. Uh, We're going to, uh, our closed session this evening, we're going to go into closed session, we're going to come back out of closed session, and then uh, to take a vote, and then we're going to go back into closed session, and we will not be coming back out this is the second time we go in. So can I have a motion to um, recess into so closed session? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll take a uh, 10 minute That recess. was like the fastest meeting ever. I'm not sure. 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 I'